Okay, my answer to this uh, question is uh, an absolute yes. There are several good examples that, uh, why I'm, I'm more than convinced that this is the case. Okay, firstly, many people actually, uh, uh, Muslim including, uh, they actually, uh, what do you call it? They're actually uh, exercising in the faster state already. See, for example, uh, many individuals, they wake up early in the morning, okay, very early, say 5 or 6 or something like that. And then they, uh, without eating any meal or they don't have their breakfast, or maybe a sip of water, and then they go out and run. Uh, run for an hour or so. Okay, and then they come back and they have their breakfast. Okay, and to my knowledge, there's been no many, I mean, I've not seen or any reported cases uh, in the literature or even examples uh, locally where uh, these people have complained or uh, have suffered from any uh, uh, what call it, uh, clinical issues or medical issues. So, um, Muslims who are exercising in the afternoon is actually exercising like the, these uh, individuals who have overnight fasted. Uh, who have fasted overnight is the same situation. Secondly, in my 20 years of exper uh, 20 years of research in uh, what call it, uh, doing Ramadan, where I trying to investigate the effects of Ramadan fasting and exercise, I've tested maybe say 200, about 200 uh, uh, individ Muslims individuals, you know, okay, and non-Muslim individuals as well, you know, as my control group, and and I made them exercise in the fasted state, okay, for I made them do exercises like maybe do a strength session. I also make them run uh, or do repeated sprints, you know, high intensity exercise, repeated sprints, several repetition. Make them run for one hour at, at moderate to high intensity uh, and also uh, make them play 90 minute soccer matches. So far, as far as I know, and of course their performance during these, uh, these exercises vary widely. Some, some do well, some don't do well and so on. But the point is, uh, they none of them Okay, uh, all these 200 over subjects or so that I've tested, have, none of them suffered from any clinical or medical issues, to, uh, as far as I know, or as far as, well, as, far as I observe. Of course, obviously, people who have uh, issues, uh, medical issues, for example, especially particularly people like who are diabetic, or people who have hypoglycemia, have suffered a period experience of hypoglycemia, where the, their blood glucose, uh, blood sugar level uh, goes down very low, okay? So these people must actually seek their medical, uh, seek medical uh, advice before they try to exercise. So in general, I would say that as a Muslim who have no issues medically, are uh, safe to exercise. We actually did a study in the year, I think I'm mistaken, 19, 2000, I think, where we actually looked specifically at this question. So the theory is, I mean, or the concept is, if Ramadan fasting is not effective or has uh, is harmful to training adaptation, okay, what will happen is, supposing if the non fasted group or the control group improve by 10% in their, in their aerobic fitness, then the Ramadan fasted group will not improve by 10%, maybe they improve by 2%. So surprise and surprise, we tested them before and after, and we found out actually there were no difference between the two groups in terms of the aerobic fitness as well as the anaerobic fitness. So our, some, our um, uh, conclusion was there were no difference between uh, Ramadan and control in terms of training-induced adaptation. The magnitude of improvement observed in the Ramadan group were similar with the non-Ramadan group. And, and we were among the first to look at, uh, to do that study, I mean to look at this effect of, uh, to, uh, the, the influence of Ramadan on training induced adaptation. We were among the first. And so far, I mean, we were done in 2000, there are many more studies, about three or four more studies that came out over the recent years, and they showed similar results. They showed that actually, if you, if the group, if the Ramadan Pasa group can train as hard as the control group, you shouldn't see any difference at all be, uh, between the two groups. Uh, whether you are, whether you exercise in the Ramadan Pasa state or non Pasa state, you will see no difference.
Okay, firstly, actually, on a daily basis, you are already, I mean, not specifically in the, during Ramadan, you are already observing some fast, some sort of fasting. Okay, for example, like overnight fasting. So when you stop eating or drinking at 10 p.m. or 11 p.m. and go to sleep and wake up, say, at 6 or 7 p.m., uh, 7 a.m. in the morning, you're actually fasting for at least 8 to 10 hours. What energy or what is, uh, fuel is being used to, to maintain your biological uh, um, status when you are sleeping overnight? Basically, the, 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 the energy comes from your liver glycogen. So actually, uh, when you overnight sleep, your liver glycogen stores will be depleted after you wake up. But the energy that is in your in your muscle, what we call the muscle glycogen cells, are not affected because you did not do any activities during the overnight, except you just fidgeting about here and there. So there is still enough, there's a lot of energy in your muscle. That's why people who can wake up early in the morning, remember I mentioned you the question number one, where they go out, wake up, and then they just drink water and they run, because they're going to use a lot of the energy from their muscles, correct? Right? And they still have, because the one that is depleting is not the muscles, it's the liver glycogen stores. Okay, and remember, um, this muscle glycogen stores is being used only when you do from moderate to high intensity exercise. If you do very low intensity exercise, then the energy comes mainly primarily from your fats. How long can this muscle glycogen stores be? Uh, it's being able to last during exercise. So the theoretically, many studies have shown that actually there's enough muscle glycogen stores in your in your muscles to last you maybe about up to ninety minutes of exercise. Of course, maybe if you are untrained, maybe slightly less because uh, less trained people have less muscle glycogen compared to people who are trained, they are, they are able to store more muscle glycogen. So maybe about, say, six, at least 70 to 80 minutes. And of course, if you are well trained, maybe a bit longer. So here, I would like to emphasize uh, that the individual Muslim who is trying to exercise, okay, should eat their, consume their sour meal because Sahur meal is the last timer or the last opportunity that uh, you're given. So something that is uh, reasonable okay, to last you the day. But here, I think the, 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 your, your question was, they seem to possess less energy. But I don't think they actually possess less energy. I think they actually feeling, okay, I, I think the most reason, the most likely reason that they encountered when they feel less is because they are feeling of tiredness or sexual tiredness. Maybe because most likely, they have not been sleeping well the last few days, now missing a few hours of sleep. Because this, a lot of studies in the literature showing that actually, Muslim actually lose one hour of sleep in on average every day during Ramadan. So if you accumulate this one hour, one hour, one hour of loss of sleep over a few days, you would have accumulated maybe a day of non-sleep. So basically, after a few days of one hour of sleep, then you feel very tired and the tiredness comes not from the lack of energy is more because you did not sleep very well. So this sleep deficiency may have accumulated and make you feel of fatigue, malaise, lethargy, and so on. So the implication here, make sure you sleep well. Make sure you have enough sleep. So don't do not stay up late, talk and chat with your friends and whatever, and then during Ramadan, and because you have to wake up even earlier to consume your meal, which you're gonna, you're gonna lose another additional hour there. So you know, so sleep early, okay, finish your things, do your homework, pump, then sleep, and then wake up at 5, and you can eat quickly, maybe if you possible, take another short nap if you can, after your sleep, if you don't have to wake up early to go to work or school or whatever. The tendency is yes, because you have less resources in your body, you can't drink water, you can't drink, you can't consume any fluid, you have less fuel in essence because of your fasting, then you get fatigued quickly during exercise compared to the same exercise in the Ramadan fast. So when you fatigue quickly or you feel a higher level of fatigue, would you get injury? Yeah, there are some studies suggesting that, but studies that have looked specifically at Ramadan fasting exercise in the Ramadan fasting said there were only two studies so far that have been published that look at the effect of Ramadan fasting on risk to injury. So one, they were done in Qatar and Tunisia and were looking at professional footballers during the month of Ramadan. The one study done by Qatar showed that actually 
uh, sorry, the one in Tunisia should, yes, there is a little bit more risk. So the risk was higher, okay, when exercising in the Ramadan fasted state. While the one by uh, done by Qatar should, actually, you were no difference. Actually, the risk was similar between exercising in the fasted state and unfasted state. So, the current status is, do actually Ramadan fasting increase injury? So, it's still debatable and because of the limited studies, we don't have a definite answer. But in order to be safe, my best advice to you now is, how do we manage the injuries? Okay, so what you do is you, you train progressively. That means, uh, which I'm going to highlight in, a, in another question is, yeah, you, 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 you progress your intensity during Ramadan. So suppose you've been training very hard during Ramadan, uh, before Ramadan. When you start Ramadan, okay, the first few days, do not maintain the same intensity just before the Ramadan month. You should start progressively slowly. Maybe cut by maybe 30-40% of the intensity. Start slowly one or two days. Because remember, you have not been... You have not performed this fasting exercise the fastest state for the last one year. So you need to adjust. You need your body to you need to give your body some adjustment. So take the one, two days to adjust the intensity, to adjust your body to this exercising in the Ramadan fastest state. That means to exercise without food, without fluid during the exercise. You must give your body some opportunity to adjust. Because if you try to maintain intensity the first day, then your risk is, is, is higher. Of course, you know, because you are working very hard without all the resources that you have. So you need to make, you know, got, I mean, you need to adjust a little bit. So everybody have to adjust. Let's go slow first. One, two, three days. And then after that, you can ramp up slowly a bit your intensity and duration of your exercise.